What's up everyone? Welcome back to Kill Hut 702's Adventures and Explorations. Today we're on an awesome adventure at an old ghost town, Alcher City, Arizona. As you can see right behind me, we got a cool old truck. We're gonna go around and check all these buildings out. We're gonna go ahead and go through the history of everything. And we're gonna try something different today. We're gonna have our chest GoPro going. So we're gonna try and do two visions in one. It's a little warm out today, so let's go. y'all so we're here at the beginning got some old pieces of mining equipment here's the front little office where you got to check in when you come in big old saguero here look like they're having it holding it up things about to tip over vulture city mine entrance we're gonna go through check out all these other buildings it's really cool they have something all set up for your self-guided tour vulture city ghost town so let's see where we're gonna start off Number one, we got the garage. So the garage is right over here. So I'm gonna keep this camera focused on me and we'll see how this chest camera works out. I haven't used both GoPros at the same time yet, so this is interesting. So that's pretty cool, we got the old garage. Looks like the front side of an old Ford. Garage actually looks pretty cool. All kinds of old parts and motors. There's their old school engine hoist. That's interesting. Battery's not that old, but old gas can. Old cylinder heads. Metal files. Not sure what this thing is. Battery. Looks like it's like some ignition coils or something. It's interesting. Not some cool old oil cans old bottles old wrenches so let's see what the history is for the garage so numero one all right now first of all the city of wickenburg originally came the to town when henry wickenburg a german came out here and discovered the vulture city gold mine that produced about $30 million worth of gold and silver alone. Um, at the same time, he also helped build the railroad to move that gold. So in my last video, you can see the train yard that we went to. That was used to help move the gold from this mine. All right, so we got the garage, a single car structure that is the starting point of the tours. Paranormal, shadow, play, and the feeling of being watched. Dark, shadowy figures seen peering from the building black mist seen moving around the structure that is interesting with that being said let's pull out my k2 meter so we'll just kind of walk around and uh, use that i know my chest cam's probably getting blocks i'm gonna set you down for a second Ugh. close up my face <laughs> All right, so we got our K2 meter going now. So I'm going to attempt to carry everything all at once. All right, so they said there's a shadow figure here. Now let's go find the gas station. Got an old tractor out here. The front of an old car, some doors. Another front of the car. Go walk this way. I'm gonna try and stay in the trail. Let's see where number two is. Number two. Number one. So the gas station is gonna be over here. It looks like. This 
is a really big place, like 16 different buildings to check out. So if I'm correct, this is the gas station. If I'm correct. Oops, I want to make sure I'm on the trail too. Yep, that's the gas station. You got your gas pumps out there, all that kind of stuff. This is so cool. It's just uh, got to own the cash register there. That thing's old looking. Bunch of old cans. That's amazing. I just love places like this where they keep the history up. This is the old gas station. A lot of old books. A lot of old everything. Old bathroom. Alright, the story of the gas station is since the early 1900s the provided parts kerosene fuel oil for vehicles and lights note the gravity feed pump the 1924 national cash register and the old arizona license plates on the wall so there's one of them all right paranormal high electromagnetic field spikes detected shadows outside the station movement of objects and tapping in response to questions that is interesting well as we got our k2 meter out if you're here with me make that tapping noise that everyone's says they hear or feel free to touch my k2 meter just let, let us know that you're actually hanging out with us Nothing but positive and peaceful vibes here. Nothing but respect. So far, nothing really has gone on in the K2 meter. So that's interesting. Just the old cash register. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and go to the pump house. Which just says the pump house is, should be right over here. This is the old gravity fed gas pump. The outside has some more old stuff here. Another big old saguaro cactus. Now if I'm correct, this should be the pump house. Uh, let's walk around this way. Competition rock. Physical Miners would compete to see who was the best hand driller. It was also used for hiring. Oh, that's interesting. Who's the bot the back rock driller? Have competitions about it. And we still got our K2 meter going. This is number three, so this is gonna be the pump house of Vulture City. Um they actually I just found out they reopened the mine here in 2016. So unfortunately we won't be able to get into the mine, but we'll be able to get up close enough to kind of see the entrance. It said that we can get up to the chain link. Wow. Want some more old school stuff. You see a picture of them down in the mine there, drilling. I didn't know what that was at first. What is that? Oh, yep, they're definitely still mining up there. I would too if I found $30 million worth of gold and silver. Drill holes were needed to insert dynamite to blast the rock and recover the ore. Typically, they were two to four feet deep, and up to a dozen holes were needed. Early miners did hand drilling. Later, heavy drilling machines were used. These items were found at the Vulture. Blast drill holes were filled with explosives, fuses, and blasting caps were set. The mine was cleared, and the charges set off with a blasting box. Yeah, spoons. Blacksmiths made used to clean out rock chips. Muck, a little barrel of mining cart. Mucking is a mining term for shoveling broken rock into ore cars. Early day muckers used picks and shovels, scrapers called flushers, followed and in turn were replaced around 
1930 by Mucking Machine. These tools were found in the vulture mine. A couple more old school photos there. Old mining cart. One bucket used to not only bring rock to the surface, but to move supplies to down shafts. Another picture of the old mine there. Some old drawings. Please do not touch. Thank you. Look like one of those old head frames. Oh, lanterns. Check that out. There's no natural light in a mine. Early day mine lighting evolves from candles to oil wick lamps. Lanterns and carbide lamps, then battery powered lighting, and now to electricity. Three candles would last a 10 hour shift, and carbide lamps wet about four hours on one charge of calcium carbide. That is pretty cool. Years after the pipeline seized the function, desert dwellers salvaged it for building material. Here it is covering an old sister near the ruins of the cabin. Incredible feet. What is this thing? Water. Oh, that's old water lines. What's that say? Section of 1980 or 1884 vulture pipeline found buried by Frank Braille in March of 2020. So they just found it last year. These are a bunch of the rocks that they found in there. Geologists in the field examining drill cores. That's what those are, drill cores. All right, and the history for the pump house. Let's see, we got relocated in 2019. The structure was vital for all aspects of mining and living in the camp as it was the sole supply of water. Paranormal, sightings of a miner and his child, both in period dress. Shadows seen darting in the area surrounding the building. A woman heard calling for children, followed by the feeling of being watched. So this is the drilling exposit. The display has been arranged to showcase the underground secrets of mining. So you guys saw that already. And let's go ahead and flip the page here. Oh, there you go. All right, so we walk around here. And we don't have anything on the K2 meter here. Is there any spirits around here? Just feel free to touch my light and let me know that you're here. Well, no K2 meter, no uh, activity for that. So let's go ahead and head on over to the roost. If I'm correct, this is the roost right here. They have them numbered somewhere. Yep, number four, this is gonna be the roost. What's the history on the roost? All right, once the private residence of the last mine manager, Ernest Dickey. The structure is typical period construction, late 1880s. Today, it serves as a small museum to display a collection of vulture artifacts spanning over 100 years. Paranormal, piano heard playing, phone heard ringing, shadowy figures seen moving around the building, doors slamming accompanied by the sound of objects being dragged across the floor. Wow. This would be really cool to check out at night. And I've looked it up. They have ghost tours that they do at night. But uh, with my time frame, I'm not really able to do all that. I got all this set up. This is the roof, home of the Vulture, Arizona's first big gold mine. Danger, wash your head. All kinds of old stuff in here as well. Terms and condition, all entering Vulture City, risk damage, property, injury, or death. So, wash yourself. That's why they make you sign the waiver. This was the superintendent's house, now nicknamed Vulture's Boost. It is currently being used as the Vulture City's Tours gift shop and guest check-in area. Numerous artifacts around the house. So, I'm going to go ahead and pick one of these up. Go ahead and walk inside, check it out. Wow. An old radio. Challenge 1920s and Super Tone released 1924 and 1929 and 1931. Records were sold by Sears, Roebuck and Company. What every rock hound needs. I think that's a, a sewing machine. That's cool. They got a bunch of stuff set up in here and they got their first aid. A little bit of everything. Vulture Mine has been back in the gold business since 2014, hard rock mining and processing ore. 
It is now an open pit operation running close to 24 7. The Mize extension plan for the near future puts the historic powerhouse, engine room, and processing plant directly in the process of development. So they got it going again, that's for sure. Vulture City Tours, if you guys would like to donate, go check that out. All right, and then you got your GoFundMe there. So if you guys would like to donate to this awesome place to conserve all the history, look at the old money. $50, $10, $100. Can you imagine what that cost back then? Got some old typewriters. Old piano. This is the piano that they're supposed supposedly here playing. I'm gonna set my K2 meter right on the piano. If the spirit's with us, hit that light for me. I know you like playing the piano. Turn this off, put it back on. That'd be really cool to get a spike with this. But not on the piano, a record player. Really 2011, 2008. It shows the different time frames of when this was here 2008, 2010. 2010, 2011. See, that's the Ghost Town Tours. And Vulture's Roof. There's all kinds of old bottles. Old pictures of equipment. Looks like that picture is an old entrance. The Witchery of Kadakari. All kinds of little artifacts, pottery, and stuff. Old hat. Just keep walking through here. Some more old school stuff over here. Be aware security cameras and use. Well, yeah. Reward $1,000 in gold coin. Look at these old. So old. Really cool bottles. Look at that old big hammer. <laughs> Some old dishes, like some china in there. Welcome to Vulture City. We got some, some old toys, rocking chairs and stuff like that. Pretty cool. So next, see if you get anything here. Are there any kids here playing with the toys still? Haven't gotten anything with the K2 meter yet. All good. Who knows? When they reopen the mine, it might have scared some of the spirits off too. Alright, let's head over to number five. The blacksmith shop and head frame. So we're in number four. We're going out the back. Looks like that's going to be number five over there. Go ahead and take a walk over there. If you guys are enjoying this little tour, make sure to smash that like button. If you're new to the channel, hit subscribe. Lots and lots of new content coming out. If y'all don't know, we are on a six day, 800 mile, 30 locations trip. And that's what I'm all about. Cool old car, an old water tank. These look like some kind of sets up for the conveyors to move the, the ore out. So I think this is, yeah, like I said, the blacksmith's shop and head frame. What is this thing? Receiver tank used to retain air and provide constant working pressure for the machines. That's cool. Blacksmith shop. There we go. Blacksmith shop. All right, history for this. In 2017, this building and the head frame next to it were relocated from the high point of the court's outcropping and entrance point to the west incline. The blacksmith and his assistant had to be very versatile, day in and day out. They would forge the drill stills, sharpen bits, 
and were skilled at improvising fittings, pipes, and other items needed for vultures' hard rock mining. Paranormal? Shadowy figures of a male seen moving around the building thought to be the original blacksmith. Be careful not to disrespect the blacksmith or he may show he is still around by banging at the walls and roof of the structure. That is definitely interesting. Turn that K2 meter on and let's see if the blacksmith is in here. We're here with nothing but respect, but I sure would love to hear you bang on the walls. So we'll just go ahead and take a walk through. Chicago, pneumatic air compressor. Wow, that thing is massive. That's what air compressors used to be like. This thing is huge. I'm keeping an eye on the K2 as well. This thing is super huge. Wow. Bunch of more oil cans up top. Look like, oh wow. Check all that out. All these oil cans. Bunch of old oil filters. Oh, they've been here for a minute. We got the springs up here, or shocks, sorry. Snap cap vials, filters. We got old gas bottles. Man. That's some history right there. Still nothing on the K2 meter yet. Blacksmith, if you're in here, come touch my meter for me. I'm here to show respect. It's a bunch of more old stuff. Look like an old press. A bunch of old nails. Old belts and hoses and all that kinds of stuff. And this will be... This is the head frame here. That was used for the mine. Looks like an old water tank again. Forge. Used for heating up the drill and stills which were placed into the adjacent machine for resharpening drills. Metal last until 2017. It was located at the powerhouse at the far west end of the Vulture Mine property. So it looks like they moved a lot of stuff over here, like within the last three, four years. Ingersoll ran drill sharpening machine, circa 1920s. Did anything? Got a bunch of more old bolts and everything else. Dives used to hold drill stills for sharpening or molds for making drills. Wow. Look like we've got some sharpening stone, grinding stone here. This is a pipe threader. Wells Bros, 1901. And here we have the head frame. head frame that was originally used for that that is awesome they still have the card up there now this is what ghost town should look like everything's still intact that is so cool we got a bunch more buildings to still check out we're only on building four so let's go ahead head on to the next one what do we got next all right we're on building five sorry Nicole's Rays, building number six. Let's see exactly where that is. I'm gonna open up this map real quick. Excuse me if the camera gets shooken up a little bit. All right, so we're at five. We wanna go to six, so six should be Five, one, two, three, four, five. Six should be right over here. So I'm correct. It's right over here. So many buildings. So we're gonna kind of start 
moving through a little bit faster that way I don't lose memory or anything like that don't really want to walk in there I don't know if that's building five or not I don't know if they're working on that well no we can go in over here more old timbers sitting there I think this is number five find out Oh, yep, number six, sorry, this is it. So, with number six, let's see what we got. Get back to the information. All right, so Nicole's rays. A rays is a type of shaft that is started underground from existing tunnel. This 170 foot rays was constructed in an attempt to explore for ore at the 135 foot level and to likely provide additional ventilation. It is the farthest eastern point of the 20 plus miles of underground workings. Paranormal, the area surrounding the rays has countless reports of footsteps and voices have been heard echoing from the deep within the shaft. And then originally, wow, that is the original shaft. Holy shnikes, check this out. So that's actually the shaft. I thought this was moved here, but no, that's the shaft. That goes 125 feet down. And you, it says you can usually hear voices. Let's set the K2 meter down here. Are there any spirits here around this rays? There is, hit the light for me. Straight down, that's just amazing. 135 feet. That is awesome. We are looking down 135 feet. You can see all the wooden timbers and everything. That's pretty cool. Hello? No echo. <laughs> Nothing on the K2. But that is pretty awesome. 135 feet down. And then the coal rays. Oh, it says 170 feet down. Sorry. Wow. 170 feet down. Can you just think I'm standing over a 170 foot hole? Wow. Wasn't expecting that. So this is actually in the original place. All right, now let's go over to number seven, which I think is over here. We got an old mine bucket, a couple of them. This looks like, sort of like an elevator shaft. They take people up and down maybe. And over here we got the ore bucket. This bucket was used to remove ore, water, tools, and other materials from the depths of the mine. And that looks like an old setup for platform for something. That was six. I think this would be number seven. And then we still got to go all through those buildings. Awesome. So much to see. I love it. Now I'm not sure if this is number seven or not, but we'll find out. Terraced event area. This grass terrace space is used for hosting wedding ceremonies, intimate concerts, award celebrations. The vertical beams of the altar are original vulture wood dating back over 100 years. No spooky stuff going on here. So that's pretty cool. These timbers are over 100 years old. But no paranormal activity here in this area. But it's pretty nice. Have a little wedding or concert here. All right, so now we're gonna head over to the Wells Fargo's post office, which I believe should be back that way. Let's find out, look on the map real quick. So, let's see where we're at. I believe we're at number six. No, we're at seven, eight. So we gotta go that way. 
get back on the right page. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and head up over this way.